When the U.S. embarked on the space program in the early 60s, we knew there were some risks involved. In spite of the great danger, there have been few human casualties. While only a handful of people have perished in the outer space program over the past 30 years, countless innocent lives have been lost in inner space, the dangerous, confined space American workers enter every day. We're concerned about confined spaces where it's difficult to protect people from serious hazards such as toxic, explosive, or asphyxiating atmospheres and other problems associated with limited means of entry and exit. These kind of spaces are known as confined spaces because they usually have a wall or other type of barrier which prevents the open flow of fresh air for ventilation. According to OSHA, some of these spaces will now require permits. They are called Permit Required Confined Spaces or Permit Spaces. The official definition of a confined space is one where an employee can enter and perform assigned work, but it has limited or restricted means for entry or exit and is not designed for continuous employee occupancy. A permit required confined space may contain or potentially contain a hazardous atmosphere, material that could engulf an entrant, hazards such as a configuration with a tapering floor that could trap or asphyxiate an entrant, or other serious safety or health hazards. Some common types of confined spaces include tanks, vessels, silos, storage bins, hoppers, vaults, and pits. The regulations require monitoring, testing, communications, and rescue capability in order to prevent injuries and death. The leading cause of death in confined spaces is asphyxiation, or the lack of oxygen for breathing. In many cases, death or injury is caused by a toxic atmosphere. In addition to breathing problems, you face other hazards in confined spaces. Often, employees must work in cramped areas right next to moving parts of machinery, such as mixers. People have been burned, ground up, crushed, or battered because the equipment was not de-energized. Moving equipment should be locked and tagged out before you start work on it or near it. Many of the people who have died in confined space incidents were the would-be rescuers. They either were not adequately trained or equipped, or they did not use that equipment and training. In confined spaces, you need to be aware of a hazardous atmosphere. That can mean an atmosphere where you could be exposed to the risk of death, incapacitation, or where you might not be able to escape on your own. Hazardous atmospheres include flammable gas, vapor, or mist in excess of 10% of its lower flammable limit. Airborne combustible dust that obscures vision at a distance of five feet or less oxygen content below 19.5%, which could lead to asphyxiation, or oxygen level over 23.5%, which could create flammability problems. An hazardous atmosphere can occur where a substance listed by OSHA or other reference is above its dose or permissible exposure limit, or where any other atmospheric condition recognized as immediately dangerous to life or health exists. Your employer needs to determine if any spaces are permit required confined spaces. A good way to know whether there is potential danger in a confined space will be a posted notification. If you need to enter permit required spaces, your employer will have a written procedure for safe confined space work. You need to know what the procedure is and follow it exactly. It's for your own protection. You will also need to have the proper personal protective equipment required for working safely in confined spaces. Confined spaces will fall into one of several categories. First is a space which is safe enough that it can be entered without a permit. A second type is one in which the hazards can be eliminated. The space is then reclassified so it doesn't require an entry permit. In a third type, the only hazard possible can be controlled by forced air ventilation, in which case an alternate procedure is specified. If it is not possible to eliminate the hazards through one of those methods, then you must prepare for entry through permit procedures. Before entering a space with a potentially hazardous atmosphere, you need to take several precautions. The internal atmosphere must be tested with a calibrated, direct reading instrument. You need to check for each of the following in order. 
the oxygen content, flammable gases and vapors, and finally, potential toxic air contaminants. Before you enter, the space must be isolated so that no hazardous material can enter. The confined space should be purged, inerted, flushed, and ventilated to control atmospheric hazards. Confined space entry by contractors for another employer must be properly coordinated between the contractor and the employer to follow an approved permit space program. Before going into a permit required space, an entry permit signed by the entry supervisor will be made available to the entrance, usually by posting at the point of entry. You need to be familiar with everything on the permit. Notify the permit supervisor if any conditions change. You need to be sure that conditions inside the permit space are acceptable for entry during the whole time it will be occupied. At least one properly trained attendant must be posted outside the permit space for the duration of entry operations. The attendant and entrance must communicate as necessary to monitor activities and give timely alerts. The attendant must know how to summon emergency help and how to perform non-entry rescues according to specified procedures. Inner space may be a lot closer to home, but it's potentially just as dangerous as outer space. Follow all the guidelines for permit required spaces and you'll come back alive from the mysterious depths of inner space. This is Claude Akins reminding you that safety is your job too.